So these days, there has been this surge of people who are developing influence within their specific corner of the market. These are the digital creators who specialize in a niche, and they begin to establish themselves as big experts in their field. There's this rise of influence that these days has been really less about celebrity, but these days it's also a strategic advantage for many, many entrepreneurs who want to not only build relationships, but ultimately leverage their personal brand to build their business. Welcome to Tech Uncensored. Hi, everyone. My name is Hesse Jones. And here's a scenario. You're building your business. You're building your product. You're getting some critical feedback. And now you're, you're starting to get some traction, but you want to move faster. You want to start finding more customers, get ready for potential investment, but you're a small team and you have a very limited social media presence. So, but one thing you're really good at is understanding, let's say the real estate industry. You're a former broker and now you realize that this sector has is in need of some major disruption. So you're passionate about solving this problem, but for the sake of your growth, you realize that to make a real impact, you need to establish yourself as a thought leader within the real estate space. So how do you do it? Many startups don't actually realize the value of establishing their own personal brands. With the rise of social media, there's been this, there's been a closing of this gap um, between, between promotion and community. And now there are endless opportunities to establish yourself as a tech leader that can help your company and yourself grow. So today I'm happy to speak to two founders who are doing just that. And Stephanie Glip, who is a co-founder and CEO of my co-futures North Atlantic, and Stacy Latoyson, who is the founding partner of Dream Big Ventures. We'll actually talk to them at about what they're doing, how they did it, understand the importance of authenticity, which is really, I guess, important when it comes to defining your presence in social media. And They'll provide advice on how early stage founders can actually develop opportunities by building their personal brands and establishing themselves as tech leaders. So thank you, um, Stephanie and Stacy, for coming and talking to me with, uh, about this today. Thanks so much for having us. It's always lovely to chat with you, Hussie. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with Stephanie. Um, because it's probably easier to to figure out how you got started by telling us a little bit about yourself and your company. Sure. Um, so yes, Stephanie, the CEO of Michael Futures. Um, I actually began my, began my career in art and photography. I loved the fashion industry, so I was a fashion photographer and worked with other brands um, on their digital marketing, their branding, and I really, really loved help and create a brand and uh, doing visual communication because I think no matter how big your, your company is, the way you present yourself to the world um, is really valuable. Um, but then I took a detour from the arts uh, to manage nonprofit housing and that gave me a whole other lot of lessons about building a business and working with people. Um, but it was really when uh, my co-founder partner and I moved to Newfoundland to start a gourmet mushroom farm, which then pivoted into a startup creating um, a next-gen material made from mycelium, which is the root system of fungi that we cultivate in vertical farms, that I really came back around to my roots in branding communications. And I saw how uh, useful that was to building my presence online. And then after the pandemic out in the real world. Okay. So, so this came easy to you, it seems like, because that, that, that was your background. Okay. Um, Stacy, I'm going to turn to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You just seem to do so many things, and obviously your presence evolved, has evolved online um, over time. So who right. are you and what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I have a lot of energy, so I, I'm involved in several things that I'm really passionate about. Um, I'm an award-winning investor, best-selling author, I'm a consultant. I'm a podcast host of the Her Money Moves podcast, where I interview women CEOs and influential business leaders who are making an impact on our economy and in our communities. Um, and I 
just all around love, empowering women. Um, I worked for Chevron for 22 years around the globe, managing billion dollar budgets and global teams. I was in China for five years. I was in Angola, Africa, an expat there too. And um, got to the point where kind of during the pandemic, I decided that I'm going to put my fate in my own hands and um, decided that I was going to go out on my own. And I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. So um, it was time to give it a chance, especially I'm a single mother and I've always told my children to go for their dreams. And I said, well, why am I not doing the same? So um, that's how Dream Big Ventures was born. Um, and, you know, there's a huge gap with equity and wealth and um, education on finances. You know, we don't grow up talking about money. And so I've made it my mission to ensure that women are equipped with the tools because we make up half of the population. And yet in so many facets, so many different industries, there is a huge gap where we're not on boards. We're not um, having equity. We're not um, the CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. I mean, it's just really ridiculous. So it's time to make a change and um, takes people to take action and make bold moves um, if we're ever going to move the needle. Exactly. And you just uh, actually highlight something important because when I talk about people having specific expertise or, or even, um, I know, something to say within a specific topic area, I think for both of you, it's important, this whole idea of equity, especially in the tech space. And, and I think you both have loud, critical voices when it comes to this lack of equity and how we can get it. So, you know, I think what we could talk about that a little bit later and how that ha actually has moved the needle for both of you. But let me ask something really basic for both of you. Um, first of all, what social platforms are you on, Stephanie? Uh, LinkedIn is my biggest one right now. And we have an Instagram that we're going to be revamping this year. Okay. And uh, Stacy. I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram, and I think the Instagram automatically updates on Facebook. Um, but I'm also, our podcast is on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, it's on all the major platforms. Okay, and do you two track the growth of your followers on, on, your, on your respective channels, Stephanie? Yes, yeah. This year was was one of the biggest jumps in in followers and connections, um, and, and just a wide range of people. So it was really exciting to see all the different people that you know want to connect with me and, and the startup as well. Okay, and Stephanie, or oh, sorry, Stacy. Yes. Oh, same here. It's really important to track your analytics to know who is your community, who's the audience that most resonates with you. So uh, yeah, most of my community, it's, it's women between the ages of like 25 and 55, you know, who are really thirsty for, for information and um, who want to learn and continue to grow in their careers and in their personal journeys. Okay, so let, let's, let's uh, start with you first, Stacey, because you, you're, you're doing this amazing job in, um, in giving women the tools for this information. You're a community builder, you're a strategist. Um, what was the moment that you actually thought that this is something that you wanted to do? Or was it was it something that just kind of happened? Leveraging your brand, building, building it the way you have. Yeah, so I have always, always been an advocate for equality. <laughs> Since I was a little girl, I was always very independent. And um, I think I had attended a conference during the pandemic and Serena Williams was the keynote speaker. And that's when I first learned that only 2% of VC funds go to women and underrepresented founders. So, I mean, that was a definite igniter for me to, you know, to do something about it. I figured, well, I have the tools to, to do this. Um, and more of us women need to, um, but also, I also had attended a conference outside of my company. So, I mean, you're talking 22 years with a pension. I never even went to many um, career expos externally because we do everything internally. And um, I saw that there was a Puerto Rican woman who was vice president at Pepsi. And it just like, 
wow, really touched me because I had never seen that. And I still haven't seen that to this day in oil and gas. Um, never, ever was there a Latina woman who was at the top and in the C-suite. And so that really you know, made me realize, I mean, there's many others like me who are not seeing it. And so um, if you see me a lot on social media, it's because I want to make sure that there is representation so that others who are, you know, at these conferences and who are, um, you know, working in the corporations know that it is possible. You can do it, too. So even though it might not look like it because you don't see that every day, but mm -hmm. we are more than capable and anything is possible. OK, thank you. So, Stephanie, um, I, I see you a lot also on LinkedIn and a lot of the stories that you tell, like to me that there, there's a humbling effect that you have when you actually post the stuff that you do, especially, especially as a, a biotech um, founder, you know, and in the clean tech space where it's incredibly hard. So um, did this come easy to you? The, do it like, you, I, I understand that you, you were in communications and you had been doing this before, but to actually leverage it for yourself. Um, how, how hard was that? Uh, yeah, it definitely wasn't as easy to do it for myself. I always love to champion others and I can always, you know, pick out the things that I want to share about other companies or people, but then I realized, oh gosh, now I really have to do it for myself. And it wasn't really until late 2021 when I won my first pitch competition, the first one I ever did. Um, a couple weeks later, I opened LinkedIn. There was so many connections and messages and people had shared things and I was like, oh, it just didn't occur to me that anyone would, you know, care that much. It was it was big for me, but I forgot how how much of a community there was out there. And and I really realized that people actually like to support others. And so I wanted to be part of that. Um, and it was just great that I could connect with a lot of different types of people uh, from investors, ecosystem partners, other founders. That's been a really great way to connect. And uh, on the other side of that as well, as an early stage a founder and startup, there's a lot of value and pressure on uh, making progress because that's a way to signal to investors and people that support you that you're working hard and you're making things happen. Um, and so that was a great way to highlight that. Um, yeah, it was a place to accumulate all my business activity and even just for myself to show that how far we've come. Sometimes it feels like we're moving at a glacial pace, uh, especially given the the conditions of the last year, but then I can look back um, or sometimes someone will like something from way back. I'm like, oh, yeah, we did that. And it just is a it's a nice reminder that we're, that we're always making progress and that there's people out there who are cheering. So I always appreciate it when Hesse, uh, when you say, oh, I saw you do this and this, because it reminds me that, yeah, there's value in taking the time to, to share the little wins. And also, you know, talking about equality and representation, I never saw anyone that looked like me, um, you know, out there doing biotech, running a company. Um, and so if there's someone out there that happens along my uh, my profile, maybe I look like them, they can res resonate with me in some way and, and see that uh, there's all kinds of people that make a CEO. It's not what we've just seen growing up. Um, exactly. There's like, yeah, so there's possibility out there. Okay. Um, now, Stacey, um, has this become over time, I think you, you guys, both of you are starting to see a little bit of traction in in you actually just being out there and saying the things that you do and, and it resonating with people. Are you starting or have you um, developed an actual strategy now to make this intentionally a channel that actually performs for you, for your business, for your community? Yes, um, I pretty much highlight um, what I'm going to post a, a little ahead of time, um, depending on what events are planned, where I'm speaking. Um, but it has definitely helped to develop that thought leadership. And um, as a result, I've been um, reached, you know, reached out for speaking, for judging pitch competitions, um, for um, co-investments, you know, a little bit of everything. Um, so it's in mentorship. But when you're, so when you're in, let's say conferences, and this goes to both of you, um, 
you know, everybody has to take a selfie or they have to, they take pictures and they, they say, oh, this is a great speaker. This is, this is someone who's doing something amazing, whatever. But sometimes it's forced in a way because they have, it's almost like I'm at this conference. I hear are some people that, that, that resonate with me. Is there, can you balance out the need to actually post as opposed to how do you know when when it is a good post to post? You know what I mean? Let's start with Stephanie. Do you understand my question? Yeah, no, that's a that is a really good question because I mean, especially with my background in photographer, the last thing I, I tend to do is ask anyone to take a photo of them or take a picture with me. It's just I don't know, just weird. So um I tried to and I also like to have a variety of things. So I'll take a picture of someone on stage or a poster just to have a, a variety of of content because I think sometimes, yeah, with the selfie, it's it's great and interesting, but if you're just have a, a whole carousel of these pictures, it, it kind of be, almost becomes about you. And it's it's about, you know, name dropping in a way that, oh, I met this person, this person. But if you can actually, you know, take a variety of pictures, kind of set the scene. And, and then that's, I guess it's about bringing value to whoever's reading the post so that they can feel like they were there and they were immersed in it rather than just see, <laughs> seeing you in a bunch of selfies because, you know, they're hardly ever flattering. Um, and then you don't really right. get a sense of what the event was. So I think that's well, how I, I kind of. Thank you. Um, Stacy. what about you? Yes. Yeah. Similarly, I'm very intentional with the messaging. You know, I want to always empower and inspire. And for those who were unable to be there, maybe they couldn't pay for that $500 ticket for that um, conference. They could feel like they were there um, and they could experience and get all the key takeaways and bring that, you know, back to them without having to, you know, pay that pricey ticket. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so you also have a podcast. I want to learn more about the podcast. Like when did that start and why, and why did that start? Yeah. So this is a groundbreaking podcast. I interview women across all industries who are CEOs and influential business leaders. And, you know, oftentimes are not the ones who are sought after for some of these um, major conferences. So, I mean, but have all of this experience. They are like amazing, uh, outstanding powerhouses. And, um, and so I just love being able to highlight them. There is no other podcast out there like this. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I interviewed a best-selling author, Liz Elting um, of Dream Big and Win. And I had seen her speak at a, a you know, a different event, but it really resonated with me since my company is called Dream Big Ventures. And I just I asked her if she would be on the podcast and she said yes. So it was so, so exciting. Um, and she sold her business for a billion dollars. So this show is all about providing tips and strategies for entrepreneurs, for corporate professionals, for, you know, all women um, to be able to succeed in business and to learn more, like it's a safe space for, because my guests are often, they're vulnerable and they tell like the, the real authentic stories because it's not easy um, getting to the top. You know, it is such a challenge. And a lot of times people only see the end. They don't understand everything that you had to go through to get there. And so on the show, they share all of the hard times and the hurdles, um, but also offer a lot of great, advice and strategies so that others can succeed. So this show is about uplifting other women. Mm -hmm. And it's been resonating, obviously, with, with your Yes, audience. yes. I mean, I mean, I've got VCs who are GPs that have raised $100 million funds to founders who are unicorns, to you know, women who've started their own film and, and film studios. Um, to, I mean, it, it, across the board, a, a woman who's a Columbia law professor, who is a huge advocate and investor in women's health. So, I mean, I, it's just so exciting for me every single time I sit down with these women and interview them and, you know, learn about their stories. And I personally learn so much and I know that the audience will too, and they do. Yeah. So you said something that was really important. I want to turn this to, to Stephanie and, and you talk about authenticity. And, and so from Stephanie, from your perspective, I mean, this is, this is almost like, I would say the Holy grail of social media. If you're going to get pe people to connect with you in a way that it's not only profound, 
but from a relationship perspective, but also eventually to help you build important connections. Tell me about how this has made a difference for you. Oh, yeah, this is, um, it's been really, really great to build uh, my presence online. And again, as I mentioned, bringing it into, into in real life, um, you know, talking about clean tech and biotech, and then, you know, that really tr- spilling over into the fashion side and being a female founder um, has brought me some really amazing opportunities to speak on panels at a wide range of events. Um, you know, on LinkedIn, you have time to make a draft and craft this message, but when you're in a room of people and, you know, your, your adrenaline's going, it, it's a, a really big challenge. So that's something I've really been able to hone with these different experiences. Um, and it's really brought me to the point of talking about the intersection of clean tech, our technology and solution in the fashion industry, which is exactly where my passion is and why, you know, I've dedicated so much to, to bringing this solution, um, to market. So it went from my first panel that I was ever invited to was from the New York, Newfoundland Young Farmers Forum, which was in a small hotel in Gander, Newfoundland, um, talking to a room of, yeah, farmers who work really, really hard. So I was like, why why am I selected to do this? You know, always with a a bit of imposter syndrome. But just last autumn, I was invited to speak at Elevate Conference on the stage and then at an event at Holt Renfrew for the H Project anniversary in the same week. So um, it just shows that I was just blown away that anyone wanted me to speak about farming in Newfoundland and then, you know, getting on these amazing panels in Toronto um, has been really cool to, to see that progression. So what do you think that is? Like when, when, when people see you, like what, what do you think is the thing about Stephanie that, that <laughs> wants people, what that, that makes some of these um, organizations want to hear more or have, or, or put you on stage to actually tell your story? Um on the one hand, I would hope it's it's positivity. Um, I by no means mean, I believe in toxic positivity. I don't sugarcoat things, but at the same time, I always remind myself it's such an immense privilege to be able to pursue this passion. Um, lots of people have to make choices with their lives and careers for survival. And so for me to be able to take this very untraveled path is, is, is always a privilege. And so, um, I, I always have to show gratitude along with any of the challenges. And I also try to be the type of person who always shows up, who's prepared, who, you know, adds value. And so that whenever someone puts my name out there, they can be confident that I'm going to perform. And um, I'm a little bit of a people pleaser. So I never want anyone to, to you know, not feel that I I contributed to, to whatever is going. And they're always for great reasons and purposes. And again, being someone up on the stage representing um, someone they haven't seen before. I think that's that's always... Uh, part of it that's really important. And I do appreciate all the people giving me opportunities, not just because, you know, I'm a founder of color, because I'm a woman, but I think it's still um, acknowledged that there's there's a still a gap in the diversity and representation. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, the one thing that I'm starting to realize is that there's a lot of strength and vulnerability. And those who actually put themselves out there um, in ways that, you know, it, it it is hard. It's hard to be able I as you say, to, to tell the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, but those are the things that resonate with people. So Stacy, what about you? Um, to be social naturally comes easier to, to you too than it does for, for other people. For those people, for those founders just starting out, right? And who don't come from the kind of background that both of you do. Um, what do you say to them? Like, what what kind of pieces of advice would you give them to, if they're just starting? Well, I think first of all, um, you don't ever grow unless you step out of your comfort zone. So why not give it a try? And you could do it your way. You know, even if you are more of an introvert, um, you don't necessarily have to always be in the forefront. Um, you could put your product in the forefront. You could. Um, do you know what is some of those um emoji and uh what do you call you know gifs that are funny yeah. you know and different um you know charts i think female quotient does a lot of that where they don't necessarily see i don't even know who the ceo is but you always see them put different um animations and uh, mm-hmm. different graphics um so yeah you could do it your way and just be creative and uh, to reach audiences um also wanted to share that 
one of the best compliments I've ever received was someone telling me, Stacy, you're a master in authenticity. You know, um, I am proud, you know, to, to share that, no, my journey was not like the, the spoon wasn't, silver spoon wasn't, you know, handed to me. Um, I was a teenage mother at 17 and, you know, nobody would ever know that, but I mean, I share it. Like, and then I've had other women who was like, I, the same thing happened to me and they'll come up afterwards and give me a hug. And they're like, just thank you for sharing that. Cause looking at you and never would have, never would have known. Um, and then I, I had one testimonial where she said, Oh my God, Stacy, I saw you speak in LA last year. And, you know, I was so excited to see you and tell you and give you an update on what's been going on in my life. She said, you know, based on what you said, I took action and I left that job and now I'm making 50% more and I just bought my first home for my baby. I mean, that is powerful. And so I feel like I am doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing um, and living out my purpose in life to help others. And that's something that when I was working my corporate job, I didn't have that kind of reach. Yeah. I, I wanted to, to to keep going on that theme because Stephanie, can you tell me maybe some stories of people that you've met along the way where you've actually impacted them, much like what Stacy was talking about? Um, how has your journey made an impact on, on on people as they start to progress? Uh, sure. Yeah, there's this one really memorable moment um, in Elevate Conference uh, last autumn where this young woman came up to me like very gingerly she's like hi I was like hi how are you and she's like are you Stephanie I'm like yes and she's like oh my gosh I am so excited to meet you I follow on LinkedIn I was just like I could not believe this this was just so she was so sweet and sincere and I literally could not fathom that anyone knew who I was out on like the internet and she was just really excited to you know see our purse our prototype talk to me and um that was like a really good reminder that you really don't know who's out there and um if I can you know make someone excited about material science and clean tech and being you know a woman in running a company um that was just really cool and sweet and so um and yeah, people are constantly like, oh, I saw you on this and that. And um, it's, yeah, it's humbling and exciting to that there is a wider world out there outside of my little bubble of, of clean tech and, and the, you know, fundraising woes where it's always positive. No one's come up to me and said anything negative about what I do. They're mm -hmm. just uh, happy to support. And I think that's one of the nicest things about, um, yeah, the, the community that I found and the people that follow is that they're so incredibly supportive. Um, you Everyone can be united in trying to make the planet better and, and preserve it for future generations. So I think there's like really um, powerful energy in that where, um, you know, there's lots of great innovations, but I think particularly in, in clean tech. Um, yeah, everyone, it's like really uniting and, and positive. I agree. I agree with that. I mean, I think with clean tech, it, because it's one of the hardest sectors to actually evolve because it has to go through testing. It has to go through validation that it's not a SaaS product that you can put in the market within a year. Um, it has to work, right? And you know, your purses, they have to be rock solid. You can't have anything falling out of those purses, right? Especially if you're developing an alternative material. So um, kudos to you for, for for doing that. And I think the important thing for founders is that when you relay your stories, you, you know, it's important that you're, you're telling, you're telling, you know, the hard truth of being an entrepreneur. And I think for both of you, I think that, that, that's very important. So for like Steph, uh, Stacy, would you say there are challenges with being, with putting yourself out there the way you do? Um, whether or not it, you know, is it, is it a constraint on you? Is it a constraint on your, your business? Is it, is, is there actually weakness in, in being too authentic? I don't think there is. Um, if anything, I think it builds trust with the community, um, because you're being genuine and, um, so no, I don't think that there's, I haven't seen any disadvantages yet. <laughs> 
Is it, but are there, and what about, what about just um, it, with respect to time and effort? Because this is now integrated into your business. You have to do this every day. You have to continue to build a presence. It's not like, it's probably equivalent to, let's say, buying ads every day. But this time, it's really just about making sure that Stacy has to get out there a specific time every day or every other day, et cetera. And so it, it has to be baked into the stuff that you do. Is that right? Yes, it is. Um, yeah, sorry. It's not hard. Yeah, like, well, that's not a challenge. I guess you're not. That's the not my biggest challenge. My biggest challenge is raising capital. Uh, okay. And my other big challenge is, um, yeah, it's time. When when I talk about time, it's more like because when you have meetings and then, then the follow up. So, but this part of it, I, I don't think is that challenging. It's the fun part, right? Yeah. So how, how can you like, what, what kind of impact has that, this had, do you think um, overall, let's say now you say you, you need to raise money, uh, the connections that you've made to get to that specific goal, how has that impacted it? Now, there's where I do see that there's an advantage um, because of building. I mean, I have built a brand um, and a, a professional reputation for Dream Big Ventures and for Her Money Moves and for Stacey Latoyson. So, um, so yeah, people can go out and, and they see what I'm doing. And oftentimes people in the community are like, Stacy, I see you, you're killing it. We're so proud of you. You know, what can I do to help and support you? And they want to partner with you. So, um, you know, there's been a lot of benefits from it. So if I were to ask both of you, if you were to Google your name today versus let's say 10 years ago, what would, what would Google say about who is Stephanie versus who is Stacy? So I'll start with uh, Stephanie. Sure. Yeah. I don't think I had much of a, a footprint 10 years ago or even three years ago. It was really in the last, yeah, two, two, three years that um, I started going out there. I actually told someone the other day, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not anonymous anymore. People can definitely Google me and they know exactly what I do, um, which is fine. I'm always proud about that. Um, but yeah, there's, I've had so many opportunities to speak and be interviewed. And um, so I think it's, it's cool that I have a footprint out there now and no matter what happens, um, at least for this time in the internet history, I can say that I was doing something and I was going for it. And, um, and, and again, knowing that I do try to always, yeah, interject, um, my values and, and what is really important to me in terms of representation and responsible consumption production to those things. Um, so it's, it's really consistent. And I think that's important in general to Absolutely. have that consistency online versus in person. You wouldn't want me to talk a certain way in, in my post and then you meet me and then I'm not really as pleasant. That's that's not a nice surprise. You try to uh, avoid surprises like that. So um, yeah, remembering what what people will read out there and then um, remembering to to carry that on into in my day to day actions and behavior. Okay, Stacy. Yeah, I don't think I didn't even create a LinkedIn account until maybe two years ago. <laughs> so, um, yeah, 10 years ago, I was in China living my best life as an expat with Chevron and had no idea that I would be an entrepreneur one day. Um, but definitely now when you look me up, I mean, you'll see the podcast episodes. Um, you'll see me speaking at the Rice Women in Leadership Conference. You'll see that I've won some awards. You'll see the book. So, um, yeah, I've made a lot of progress and a lot of momentum in the, the last two years. So if I were to ask both of you, because it, 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 it still feels like you both have uh, a certain amount of advantage over a lot of startup founders. Okay, so we have a startup founder who who's building something, but they absolutely have like zero social media presence, maybe except for GitHub, let's just say. <laughs> All the developers know that person. So what are some, let's say, no-brainers to get them started? Like how, how do they start doing this on LinkedIn, especially among a community where they're they're trying to 
find out, get more customers or potentially find investment. Stephanie? Um, the two things I was thinking about are one, that no one is too small. So uh, don't let your imposter syndrome get in the way, which is easier said than done. But if, if you just uh, participate in an event, even if you didn't win, write about it. Um, if you even read an article that's a win for your, your industry, that's something to share. Um, but to go along with that, which is the, the key part, is to reciprocate. So, um, you know, liking, commenting, and sharing in other people's wins, however big or small, um, is really important because it means just as much to them as it does to you when people do that for you. And it just shows to everyone that you're showing up for others. And I think that's a really nice way to show that you're committed because, um, it's easy just to take all the likes and the shares, but to, to, to put it back out there in the world, I think will will really show on a human level and on a thought leadership level that you're, you're in it for the right reasons and that you're someone that other people want to amplify. And then those small wins will definitely turn into medium sized wins to bigger wins and huge wins. And then you'll, you'll bring people along that journey with you. And I think at the beginning, yeah, it really seems like, Oh, it's just one, one thing people are going to come. They just, I just one little pitch competition, but then, you know, in a couple months, it'll be the second pitch competition, then an article and, and it'll snowball that way. And as long as you've cultivated the, the simple things like liking and commenting and sharing at the beginning, um, you're going to, you know, see that, um, come back to you. Okay. Stacy. Yes. I don't know that I have much to add from Stephanie's response. <laughs> but on, but on social media, so for, let me see, I'm just trying to think, oh, maybe, maybe the, the question is where do you draw the line between how, be, between being uh, someone who's authentic, who's sharing things and then being, let's say a spammer. Because some people can do it really, some people can be really good at putting stuff out there all the time. But then um, for somebody that's just starting out and and they're putting out content, they, they're trying to get to the right audience and, but they don't want to be annoying. They don't know, they don't, you know, they don't know the definition of authentic yet, right? Because like I said, it comes easier to some people than others. Um how do they how do they find that first social media post yeah i think if you read a really great book you know you could do a book review and share that you could you know that's relative to your industry and to what your to your company um you could let's say you attended a conference and maybe highlight some speakers that really resonated with you and in your industry. Um, maybe you host um, kind of a, a webinar like what we're doing. Um, you know, it was a good way too um, to highlight your product and, and your business. Mm -hmm. That's actually, that's a good thing in, in a way. I, I was just thinking about that because if you don't know how to do social media as well, then do something like a podcast where you're the one asking questions and the experts are the ones giving their opinions. And so uh, vicariously, what you're actually doing is you're creating the content for those for, for yourself in a way, because you're the one that needs a lot of those answers, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's hard and I, 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 I completely get it. And that, these are the questions, the questions I'm asking you are the questions that many founders are asking me because they, it, it's not easy for them and they don't want to buy ads. They want to be relevant. They want to start connecting with the right audiences, but they don't know how. So, okay. So any closing thoughts for, for either of you, uh, Stacy, I'll start with you. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, um, do your research. If there's certain, people that you follow and you really like what they're doing, um, don't be afraid to even reach out to them. Um, and maybe that's, they can be your first interview. Um, and yeah, don't feel like you're, um, yeah, just don't be afraid to put yourself out there and say, I mean, especially if you want your businesses to succeed, then um, it's kind of part of the, it's part of it. You know, if you look at a lot of very successful businesses, um, I mean, they have commercials, they have 
their name out there in the public. So especially if you're going to be the CEO of this company and you're representing it, then uh, you're going to have to learn how to get comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. Stephanie? Um, I would say be as willing to take advice as you feel like you're in a place to give it. And on the flip side, be as willing to give help as much as you're willing to ask for it. Um, definitely be kind and show gratitude because that will show that will shine through anything that you do. Um, and I always ask how you're bringing value because I think that uh, intent to bring other people value is how, again, you'll get that returned many times over just by having it, putting a good intent out there into the world. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. That That's on that note. Uh, that's all we have time for today. And I thank you so much. Stephanie and, and Stacy for joining me. I know that I know I was grilling you, but I, I'm thinking there must be an easy way for to, to be uh, who you two are. And uh, I think there are a lot of people who, who continue to struggle. But I think the advice you gave today is great um, because uh, now now uh, founders who are just starting out will have some at least some basic tools. And I would say be natural, get out there and just try, right? Nobody's going to slam you for trying and you'll get better every day. That's what I believe anyway. So thank you both for coming. For our audience, um, if you have topics you want us to cover, please email us at communications at altitudeaccelerator.ca. And until next time, everyone, please have fun and stay safe.